Hey everybody, it's AJ from Disney Food Blog, and today we're going to talk about something that makes a big impact on your visit to Walt Disney World, no matter what time of year you go. We're going to talk about the weather. Now, when Walt started his first theme park over in Disneyland, well, it basically he chose paradise, right? Uh, Southern California, the weather is wonderful, probably 360 days out of the year, but Orlando is a little bit different. No matter what time of year you go, there's definitely things to take into consideration in terms of what you pack and how you plan for the weather. So let's start with summer. Summer in Orlando, it basically runs from the beginning of May until the end of October. It's going to be hot or has the chance to be extremely hot no matter when you go in that time frame. And the humidity is going to be extensive. So you're basically going to be swimming through the atmosphere in Central Florida during that time frame. It's going to be very hot, very humid. You're going to be sweating. So here's how you plan for that level of heat. So the typical advice that everyone always gives is actually quite good, even though it's stereotypical. You plan your park time in the early morning and the late afternoon so that you can avoid that heat of the day when the sun is directly overhead. So be sure to get over to Rope Drop or Extra Magic Hours in the morning. Hit up all the rides you want to ride there in the morning before it gets too hot. Then head back to your hotel room, swim in the pool, take a rest, maybe go to a table service meal there in the in the heat of the afternoon and then head back to the parks in the evening when the sun's starting to set. What's great about that particular strategy is that usually in these summer months, Disney keeps the parks open later. So your parks are generally going to be open till 10, 11, midnight. So you will be able to take advantage of a lot of time in the parks, even if you go back when the sun, when the sun starts setting. So along the same lines, plan on doing the indoor attractions midday. So if you do want to stay in the parks all day, plan on doing things like Finding Nemo, Festival of the Lion King, The Little Mermaid Show, Philhar Magic, Carousel of Progress. Those kinds of things are great to do in the middle of the day when it's really, really hot outside because you're going to be indoors in air conditioning for a significant part of that time. So that's a good plan as well. And like I mentioned, schedule a table service meal midday. So instead of doing your table service meal for breakfast or dinner, plan to do it in the middle of the day. You're actually going to pay less money that way um, instead of doing it for dinner. And you can also get into the AC and kind of cool down a little bit if you're if you're doing the parks morning to night during the summer. Okay, and uh, definitely drink water. We say this a lot here on the DFB Guide channel. You want to drink as much water as you can. Bring along some, some collapsible water bottles. Get them filled at the counter service locations because you can get that free ice water at counter service locations and fill up your collapsible water bottles with that or your just any water bottles that you want to bring. Make sure you're drinking that water and also bring a cooling towel. They have cooling towels in the parks that they sell. You can bring some as well. We've gotten ours off of Amazon in the past and we really, really like them. These are kind of chamois towels basically that you can douse in cold water and they stay nice and, and sort of damp and cool for a long time. And they also have like actual cooling towels that have, you know, chemicals in them that make them colder. So those are smart to bring as well. In terms of clothing, be sure to wear the right clothes. Bring and wear the right clothes. So light clothing instead of dark clothing, breathable stuff, possibly SPF rated so you can avoid those sun rays while you're there. A lot of little kids clothing has SPF in them now and you can find adult clothing as well. You can wear rash guards during the day. Those are great too if you're especially going to go on water rides and things like that because they'll dry really quickly. And consider bringing a hat as well to sort of keep your face shaded. In terms of food, be sure to know where the best cold snacks are on your route. So things like La Fou's Brew over at Gaston's Tavern, Dole Whips, there's slushes all over, lots of different counter service locations. So kind of watch our other snacks videos and make sure that you know where those colder snacks are so that you can get a refreshing treat while you're walking through the parks. So there are some tips for how to uh, kind of deal with the weather and the heat in the summer because it is, I mean, it's a long season and it's a rough one to get through, especially on those really, really hot days. If you're starting to feel faint and you're starting to feel a little sick, just get to air conditioning and sit down. Uh, same thing with your kids. We've seen people faint. We've had children faint. So definitely get into air conditioning as soon as you can if you start to feel woozy. Okay, the other side of the summer, besides the heat, is the rain. In Central Florida, you're going to have rain most days during the summer. Usually, it's just a few little showers here and there. In the afternoon, it can happen anywhere in Disney World. It can be raining in Animal Kingdom and not in Magic Kingdom. It happens all the time. But you do want to be prepared. Because if you're going between June and October, it's probably going to rain during the day while you're there. So the first thing is to bring 
things from home, bring things from your room, like a poncho, an umbrella, a rain jacket, something like that, because you can buy those things in the parks, but they cost a lot of money, a lot of money. So take it from me. I have been caught in a rain, an unexpected rainstorm because they did not forecast it. And it was unexpected rainstorm. And I had my parents and my children and the whole family was there and I had to buy ponchos for everybody and it cost a pretty penny. So bring your ponchos, bring your umbrellas from home. Um, They don't take up a whole lot of room and it can really be a lifesaver when you're out there in a central Florida downpour. Definitely wear the right shoes. So when it is raining, you don't want to be wearing something like flip flops or sneakers that are going to get super waterlogged. I really always recommend that people look for water friendly shoes. So shoes with some sort of a back strap so that your feet aren't going to be slipping and sliding all over the place if you are in flip flops and some and a pair that will dry quickly. But I've I've really found things like Tifa sandals to be perfect for walking in the parks all day and uh, getting wet in on those water rides and in the rainstorms as well. I usually that's usually what I wear is my Tifa sandals when I am in the parks. If you are wearing your sneakers, be sure to think about an extra pair of socks because that can really help if you have, you know, those waterlogged shoes. As far as meal times, when you're thinking about the rain, schedule those meal times around typical storm hours. Again, it's going to be in the afternoon, usually in the summer and fall. And so the counter service places get packed when those rainstorms come. So plan your meals, make sure you have some sort of a table service reservation during that time, or you know the less popular counter service locations to kind of run into or the larger ones. Usually the larger ones can accommodate obviously a lot more people. When it comes to rides in the rainy season, you want to book your fast passes for those outdoor rides in the morning because again those rides are going to close if it starts to rain or if there's if there's a thunderstorm if there's potential for a lightning strike so like big thunder mountain is probably going to close down if there's potential for a lightning strike or if there's a downpour they're not going to be running that ride so schedule all those outdoor coasters and things like that in the morning and plan for those indoor rides in the afternoon and late afternoon if you can also definitely pack a few plastic bags ziploc bags foldable bags. Even if you think your park bag is waterproof, there may be a couple of things in there that you want to double bag. So your camera, your wallet, things like that, you might want to stick in a Ziploc when the rain starts to fall. Or when you go on a water ride, I always bring a Ziploc for my camera when I um, go on Splash Mountain, just in case, or Kali River Rapids, things like that. I always bring a couple of Ziploc bags. And you know, if you're a parent in the parks, you already know to bring Ziploc bags because you never know when you're going to need them. (laughs) You never know when you're going to have, you know, some sort of an accident or situation that you're going to need a Ziploc bag for something. So um, just stick a couple of extra ones in your bag when you're out there. And finally, again, if you are a parent, um, consider bringing a plastic stroller cover. I have had the situation happen to me once and I will never have it happen again to me where my stroller has been outside during a downpour in the Magic Kingdom. And so I've had a sopping wet stroller for the rest of the day. So, because you know, the stroller parking is outside. You don't take your strollers inside with you when you go on, on rides and attractions or in restaurants. It's all outside. So bring a stroller cover, a um, one of those plastic ones, and cover it well so that you don't have a sopping wet stroller because I had to buy ponchos for the stroller too. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> So hopefully that'll help somebody out there. All right. So speaking of rain, let's move on to hurricane season. Now this is in the fall. This, um, I I think Central Florida has three seasons. They have uh, summer, hurricane, and winter. (laughs) Those are the three seasons that Central Florida has. Hurricane season runs from June to November with the majority of the activity taking place between August and October. And every year during that hurricane season, there's going to be an average of six hurricanes, including three major hurricanes swirling around out there in the Atlantic. So if you're watching the Weather Channel and you're planning your trip between August and October, there's going to be something out there that you could be concerned about. But don't worry too much. Don't stress too much. Since 1851, fewer than 40 hurricanes have made landfall in Florida. And up until 2016, they had had 11 uninterrupted years without a landfalling hurricane. So it's statistically very unlikely for your trip to be impacted by a hurricane in 
Florida. That said, there are always going to be rainy systems, there's going to be potentially tropical storms and different systems kind of rolling through Florida. So it's something to definitely keep an eye on the weather as you're planning your trip. Many people have been caught in tropical storms and hurricanes in Orlando in the past few years. It does happen, so it's something to consider when you're planning your trip. And so what does Disney World do during a hurricane? Basically, if there's a hurricane warning for Orlando, they will consider closing the parks. The parks, I believe, were closed for two days during Irma last year. And when that storm is going is going by, if you are a Disney World hotel guest, you will be asked to stay in your room. So that's sort of what they do. They, they do set out some, you know, they do make sure that everyone has enough food. They make sure that there are things to do. They have movie marathons and things like that. They have stuff for the kids to do. A lot of times they'll bring characters in, which is really fun. And it's another reason, <laughs> another reason why I like, I want to, I like to stay in hotels where I can access the lobby from my room without going outside is that. But um, if I'm ever there in a hurricane, I want to be able to get down to the lobby and do all the stuff that they have with the characters and with the, with the food options and things like that. I want to be able to get over there and not have to walk through a hurricane to get there. So Disney does definitely take care of their guests during hurricanes. And you should be sure to check out Disney's hurricane policy on their website so that you know what your options are in terms of refunds should there be a hurricane while you are there. And if you are there during a hurricane, how you deal with it is you, you, know, you stay in your room, you follow the directions laid out for you by the Walt Disney World cast members around you. Usually that will pass within a day or two, and then you'll be able to get out into the parks. It will be rainy and windy, but the parks will probably be pretty empty, so you have, you'll have the opportunity to, to kind of ride a lot of stuff without a lot of people around. So follow all the instructions for the rainy days and try to enjoy yourself as best as possible. And the last one is winter. So in winter, the weather is very changeable, and we're talking like November, December, January, February, March are kind of the winter seasons there. The weather is very cha- variable and changeable and it can be 50 degrees one day and 80 degrees the next day. So the main consideration here is to bring layers. Wear layers, bring clothing for any temperature really because I have been there wearing shorts and a t-shirt one day and the next day I have to have a scarf and a winter coat and that level of cold. Keep an eye on the weather before you go. Make sure you know what's coming to Orlando before you head down there and bring everything you're going to need. Usually in the winter, it's going to be cold in the morning and warm up in the afternoon. So things like light jackets, layers, sometimes trousers that zip off so that you have, you can turn them into shorts. Things like that are going to come in really handy in the winter in Orlando. But the one thing to be most concerned about, watch the weather. Don't get caught in the middle of a cold snap when you don't have anything to wear because then you're going to be spending a lot of money on cold weather clothing in the parks, which is not what you want to do because that's going to set you back a few hundred bucks. So that's what to expect when you are in Florida weather, in Orlando weather. And those are some tips that I hope will help you on your trip. Please let us know in the comments what your experience has been when you've been in Florida. We'd love to hear your weather stories and the things that you learned, like I learned about the strollers, the things that you learned while you were there. Let us know in the comments. We can't wait to find out your fun stories. So this is AJ for Disney Food Blog. Please give us a like and subscribe and we'll see you real soon.